Hello everybody and welcome back. Today our topic is going to be about the systolic function of the heart. The systolic function expresses the ability of the ventricles to empty. The systolic function is determined by the loading conditions. The loading conditions are two, the preload and the afterload. The preload is the load imposed on the ventricle just before the contractions start. And it is at the end of the diastole, so it is the end diastolic volume. For the afterload, it is the systolic load on the ventricles after it has started the contraction. So it's the aortic pressure, or more accurate, is the aortic impedance. For the contractility of the heart, the contractility is the intrinsic capacity of the myocardium to shorten independent of extrinsic factors. So, independent of the preload, afterload, or the heart rate. The preload or the Frank Sterling law of the heart. The preload is the intrinsic ability of the heart to adapt the force of the ventricular contraction, which is the systolic volume, to increase volumes of the inflowing blood, which is the preload or end diastolic volume. This is called the Frank Starling Glow of the Heart. Within the physiological limits, the heart pumps all the blood that returns to it by the way of the veins. The greater the heart muscle is stretched during the ventricular filling by an increased end diastolic volume, the greater is the force of contraction and the greater the stroke volume pumped into the aorta. The right atrial dilation following an increased venous return increases the heart rate as well by mechanical stimulation of the sinoatrial node, which forms an increased venous return increases the cardiac output by raising both the systolic volume and the heart rate. The force, which is the length relationship, is an increased stretch of the cardiac muscle, which causes a stronger contraction. Why does force cause this? Because in skeletal muscle, increased stretch provides a better interaction between actin and myosin. The amount of tension developed corresponds to the degree of overlap between the actin and myosin filaments. In cardiac muscle, as the sarcomere length decreases from 2.4 to 1.88 mm, active tension falls steeply. Since the sarcomere has the same length in both types of muscle, the fall in tension at lower sarcomere length cannot be due to the decrease in the overlap of actin and myosin. Calcium transients are not significantly affected by the sarcomere length. The pressure volume diagram. The pressure volume diagram shows the limits of ventricular stretch and the effects of stretching on the systolic and diastolic pressures. Systolic pressure curve proves the Frank Starling law of the heart. At, increases at increasing loading volumes, the force of contraction increases. Now we're going to be talking about the influence of increased contractility on performance curves. A ventricular performance curve has a length tension diagram that expresses the functional ability of the ventricles to pump blood. It plots the stroke work, which is pressure multiplied by the ventricles, as an estimate of tension against left atrial pressure, as an estimate of end diastolic volume which can be obtained on a patient. The positive entrop agents shift the performance curve upward and to the left. The Starling's law is not a fixed relationship.
afterload and the anrib effect and a healthy heart afterload and the anrib effect a healthy heart can overcome any physiological acute increase in afterload after an initial decrease the systolic volume comes back to normal within a couple of heart beats how the ANRIP effect works when the aortic pressure increases abruptly. A positive inotropic effect follows within 1 to 2 minutes. This mechanism, which in increases the wall tension, stimulates stretch receptors, which induce the sodium, simulating the sodium-calcium exchanger resulting in an, in an increase of calcium. The garden hose effect is an increased aortic pressure which rises which raises the coronary perfusion and an increase in the coronary artery pressure is distending the heart from within its wall inducing a better shortening of the myocardial fibers the preload is related to the degree to which the myocardial fibers are stretched at the end of the diastole after load is related to the wall stress which generated by the myocardial fibers during the systole. So this was everything for today. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon again in the next video.